Hi, I'm Valder Beebe. I'm the host and the visionary of the Valder Beebe show, God Talk. Some people talk to God and others believe that God talks to them. Join us in conversation with authors, religious clergy, metaphysicians, and regular people like you and I and God Talk. God Talk is a podcast available on FM Radio, Roku TV, and online. Subscribe at ValderBBShow.com. You can also subscribe at YouTube.com slash ValderBBShow. Join the conversation of God Talk. I'll see you there. Good day and welcome back to the Valder BB Show. It is time for my next guest. You guys know I love National Geographic. I think they're the best photographers on the planet. So today I've got one of those who's going to give us a peek inside of his book called Photo Art Wonders. I've got Joel Satori. He's here to guide us through this. Joel, welcome to the Valder BB Show. Thank you. Great to be here, Valder. I love it. You're selling diversity in the animal kingdom. I'm thinking like, but if people could get the diversity in animals, maybe they'll get it in people. They might. Yeah. We, I mean, we hope people will stop and look at the, <laughs> look at the books and realize that everything counts. Everything's important. It's good to be a curious, open-minded person going through life, you know? And so with the wonders book, especially we just want people to to look at them and realize there's a lot of biodiversity on the planet that's worth saving and and it's amazing and and fun really yes. and fun so much fun you say you're going to photograph 20,000 animals is that correct that's right 20,000 species is what the world zoos aquariums uh, wildlife sanctuaries have in their collections human care so after 15 years we have about 12,000 species now and we need another 8,000 or so, maybe 10,000 to get the project done. And so we'll, we'll get it. It's just a matter of being persistent. Well, I see you and your cute wife in the book, but the book is mainly focused around the different species. Tell me how you were able to capture these. I know they're in captivity. I'm not sure if they're all in captivity, but tell me how you were able to capture them. Right. They're all in controlled circumstances. So even if we work, let's say with a bird banding group, the birds will go into our little cloth shooting tent. We'll photograph them in there before they're released. So how we do it is we reach out to zoos and aquariums, wildlife sanctuaries, and we, uh, we see if they're interested in working with us. And we give the pictures away to these places. So they can do it with them what they need to. So the vast majority say yes. They send us what a list of what they have. We look through it we've already got 12,000 species. There's most of them we don't need, but there's a handful we do at each place. And we say, what do you think? And then if they say, well, you, you need these 20, we, we think we can do these 15. We're like, okay. And then the zoo gets ready for us. And that, by that, I mean, if it's a big animal, they'll literally paint an off exhibit space, black or white and shift the animal in. If it's a smaller animal, we just shift them into cloth shooting tents with black and white liners that we bring with us big, big cloth tents for pelicans, smaller little cloth tents for say a mouse or a frog. And then we start in. So these animals look like, I guess they're, they're kind of like high school senior portraits, but for, but that's, that's how the photographs come across. We just are looking for eye contact to show people that there's beauty and intelligence there. And also to connect directly to us as primates, we're really interested in eye contact. So that's, did, that's why we think the project's been successful. Did you know your book could make people less intrepid about the species? And let me tell you what I mean. On page 100, I think it's, it's page 101, you have the Egyptian fruit bat. I am scared to death of bats, but I saw this little bat. I'm going like, how cute. They're very cute. And yeah, I know they're scary to people. Halloween's about the only time people think about bats, a lot of us, but they're really, really critical in terms of pollinating fruits, uh, in, you know, on fruit trees. They're really critical in terms of cleaning up insects that would otherwise bring us disease. All these animals evolved with each other. And so they keep their own populations and populations of other animals in check. And that's really critical. I mean, they, People just don't realize that without other animals and especially plants, we couldn't survive. These animals go away, so could we. 
And so by presenting these animals wondrous looking as they are, entertaining as they are to a global audience, hopefully we get people to realize, oh, there's a connection here. If this one goes away, that would be very detrimental to us. So th that's really the thing. We have a little bit of a hidden agenda. We're not political at all, but, but we do want people to try to care about all the other species on the planet because when we save them, we're saving us as well. And you've given us such a beautiful way to think about it, Joe, you and your partner. Uh, you've got pattern. That is a beautiful section, you know, uh, looking at everything from the hyena to don't like snakes. But, you know, you made me think, think boy, that's beautiful because of the pattern you've shown us. I think this can maybe soften our heart and maybe get us more interested in, in, in being conservationists and environmentalists. So can I say job well done? Thank you. And remember, without snakes, we'd be overrun with rodents. So we <laughs> have to love them all, great and small, no matter whether they crawl or whether they fly high in the sky, we have to give them all the respect they deserve, even insects and to try to be good stewards and, and help them exist. You know, we live in the age of man now, the Anthropocene, where humans determine the fate of everything else, of all the world's ecosystems and animals. And that Joel, finally, us. doing this beautiful book with and for National Geographic, how does this change you? Well, it made me realize that all these animals are very intelligent and adaptive and resourceful. I mean, even if you just look at a spider, it's more complicated than any machine built by human beings so far, in terms of the fact that it can reproduce, flee from predators and threats, hunt down prey, stay out of bad weather. I have great respect for every, for every living thing now. I've looked them all in the eye, and I can just say that they're, they're worthy of protecting. They're all glorious in their own way and very complicated and individual works of art, each and every one. So... I have a great respect well, you, for the animal kingdom, and I'm trying to pass that along. Well, you and your partner are a work of art for doing this book with National Geographic, and I'm giving away a few copies. If you guys want a few copies, head on over to my Facebook page and find out how you can win a copy. Joel, I want to thank you. Continue. Please come back when you do your 20000 I'd love to see what else you bring to the world. All right. Thank you so much. No, thank you for the work you're doing. This is like Jesus work. This is really, really, really spiritual work. Thanks for being my guest. Thank you. Hi, I'm Valder Beebe. I host the Valder Beebe Show broadcast on radio and television. And this is My Phone Pouch. My Phone Pouch is a great invention. It allows me to go hands-free, pocket-free, purse-free, even belt-free. Head on over to myphonepouch.com.